One of the biggest mistakes that junior React developers make is using the div element too much. So let's take a look at unnecessary usage of the div element and some alternatives that you have. So in this example, I just have a subscription component and here we have this button view current plan. Now, if the person has an active subscription, we may also want to show these two other buttons, upgrade plan and cancel plan. So here I'm checking for has active subscription. And if that's truly, we're going to render these two buttons. Now in JSX, you do need to wrap these two buttons in something. So if I leave off the div here, you will see I get red squiggly lines. If I save here, you can see we're going to get an error because we always need to return one React node, not two. Now I'm returning two buttons. So typically the junior React developer is going to try to wrap this in a div. If I do this, the error will be gone, but we have two other problems. The layout has been disrupted because with Flexbox as well as CSS Grid, there is a relationship about the parent and child component. So if you add a div in between there, you can disrupt the layout. That's the first problem with using unnecessary divs. The second problem is you clutter up the HTML output. So here if we inspect our project in the DOM inspector tool, we're going to see this div here. And this is just one div, but in a bigger project, you're going to have a lot of unnecessary divs, a lot of unnecessary nesting. So we don't really need this div. So instead, what you can use in React is the React fragment element. So we can use react.fragment here as well. If I now save here, you can see that the layout has been fixed and everything still works. And if I now inspect the HTML output here, you can see we have have a nice clean structure here, no unnecessary nesting. And instead of writing it like this, people typically just write the shorthand, which is just this. So if I save here, it will still work. So should you always use the shorthand format of that React fragment? And the answer is no. So here I have another example here. Let's say we have some subscription options that I put in an array. And this time we're going to map over that array. So here I'm mapping over each element in the array. And here I want to create a button. And then if the index is zero, so for the first button, I want to output like a little dot here. At least that's my intention here, right? So for the first one, we're going to have this span here as well. So now we are again returning two elements here and you need to wrap that in something. So here I've wrapped this as a junior React developer would do in a div. And now you can see the layout has been disrupted. This is not the layout that we want. So ideally, of course, we could just wrap this in a React fragment. If I save here now, you can see that this is indeed the layout that we want. So everything is working now, but there is one problem with this and that's because we are mapping over something, you need to use the key. Now, if you have the shorthand format of this React fragment, you cannot just write the key like this. This will not work. So if you are mapping over something, you do need to use that long form React fragment and then with the key. Key, let's say index. And of course, for the closing tag as well. All right, so now everything works. And now we also have the key properly set up. You can, of course, also import this separately. So instead of writing react.fragment, just use fragment, but then you do have to import it separately like this. This also works. Now, the problem goes beyond React fragment though. You also want to use semantic tags throughout your JSX. There are basically three reasons. First of all, it becomes easier to read and scan your source code as well as the output code. It's better for SEO, so you have a higher chance of ranking in Google if you have a public website. Also better for screen readers, accessibility purposes. So let's quickly talk about the semantic tags that we have from HTML that we can use here in JSX. So you have to think about it in terms of a page. And a page starts with an HTML tag. And in the HTML tag, you typically have a head and then a body. Now I'm using Next.js here, and it depends a bit on how your framework is set up, but Next.js has the concept of pages, and it does make all of this much easier. So if you create a new Next.js project, you're going to get this root layout file. This is basically the root component of your application, and it's wrapping every page. So on every page, we will automatically have this HTML tag and this body tag. Typically next to body, you also have this head element where you specify essentially metadata for the page. Now, since I'm using Next.js, we shouldn't do it like this. We now have this metadata that will take care of that. So you just export a metadata constant where you can specify the title and description of the page. Since I'm exporting this in my root layout file, the title will be the same for all pages now, unless I override it specifically in some other page. And you can override it by simply exporting another constant metadata in that particular page file or layout file if you have nested layout. So usually in that head, you also want to have these two meta tags for the character set as well as for the viewport. Next.js will automatically include that even if you don't define your own metadata for a route. And what about things like fav icon and open graph images that you usually would also specify in the head? That's now based on files. So if you create a fav icon file here in the app directory, this will be the fav icon for your project. And you also use a separate file for open graph images for robots and for the site map. So we don't want to specify head like this ourselves. So we can leave it out here. So basically in the root layout component, you determine what you want to have on every page. That page will basically be substituted for 
children here. So for example, here then in this page, the home page, I can then have my main tag. So if I go to the home page here and I inspect the HTML, you can see I have an HTML tag, I have a head tag from Next.js, body tag, and then in there now I have my main tag here. The main tag is for the dominant content on the page, so the most important content. Typically you also have a header and footer, and you want to have the same header and footer typically on every page. So it makes sense that here in the body, we also add a header and footer. So I'll show you what a typical structure on the page looks like. So we're going to have a header, and here we're going to have basically the page, and the page starts with main. So we're going to have basically a main like this right and then we're going to have a footer if i do it like this every page will have the same header and footer because it's in the root components so it will automatically add this to each page if i save here now you can see now i have a body and then i have a bunch of scripts here that's just from an next.js but then i also have header main and footer what do you typically have in a header you have a nav you use the nav tag for an important block of navigation in there you usually have a set of links so it's going to be something like ul which is unordered list meaning the order doesn't matter if the order does matter you also also have ordered list for example you have the result of some championship a right? list of candidates you may want to have that an ordered list of the champion at top typically the order of the links doesn't really matter and then you have a bunch of list items and then in there you have the actual anchor tag that's right? so it's quite nested here usually you just have a bunch of links there in next.js typically you want to use the link components that you get from next.js this link component under the hood will actually just give you an anchor tag now if i save here we still have header main footer on the page if i open up the header we now have a nav, ul, li, and then we have these anchor tags. In the header, you often also want your logo, and typically that would just be an image. I will comment this out for now. Now, I'm writing it all here in the root layout component, and it doesn't matter where you define it. I could create a separate component out of this. I could call this header, and I would just create a separate component for header. It would be the exact same here, and then I can just replace that with header here. All right, so now if I save here, we're going to see the exact same here in the HTML structure. So you can see it's the exact same. I saved the file, and it's the exact same. Same with footer i could define that as its own component in its own file but it doesn't change anything for the structure all right so what do we typically have in the footer actually in the footer you also have links usually but these are typically not an important set of links at least not as important as you typically have in the header so typically you don't wrap that in a nav tag but you can still have a list and again it's very nested so you could still have that same structure like in the header all right so don't use div for this you can just use footer this is a semantic tag it conveys extra meaning same with header all right technically you can use div and it will work the same way, but you lose semantic meaning, right? So header comes with certain semantic meaning, which gives us these benefits, right? Same with nav. I could use a div for this and it will work the same, right? Div is a divider. It has basically no semantic meaning, but nav does have some semantic meaning and it gives us these benefits. Let's quickly create a separate component for footer as well. So it's more symmetric looking. It's going to be the footer component, footer, and I can just paste this right here, import the link, import link, and now I can import the footer like this. All right, so now our root layout looks a bit cleaner, I think, but you can see i saved here and it all still looks the same so we have header main from the page and then footer all right let's go into the main then let's go here so this is the main that we see here that's typically i like to start every page with main because this is going to be the, the dominant content on the page the most important content so what other tags do we have so typically you're going to have multiple sections on your page a section is pretty much the same as div the only difference is that in section everything inside there is related to each other semantically speaking so here on the home page i may have some kind of landing page Right, SaaS Metrics Inc. We provide the best metrics for your SaaS business. And it could be an introductory section. And these two elements in there belong to that same overall semantic meaning. And then we can have another section, maybe the benefits. And right, so here we could have the benefits of using this particular service. And then maybe about us. We started because... Right, so here we have three different sections. And we could use diff with this. But section is just a little bit more semantically correct. Because everything in there belongs to that same overall semantic meaning. I'm using heading tags here and here h1 means it's the most important heading on the page and it's a hierarchy so h2 is slightly less important we also have h3 even less important these are equally important so you can give them the same tag we are of course also using this paragraph tag right you could use diff for that but let's use a paragraph because that actually describes properly what that is so some other ones that you're going to see sometimes are a site this is for example for a sidebar this should not be the main focus essentially this is just something on the side we also have article article 
articles a little bit more common. So article is essentially the same as section, but an article you should be able to pull out of that website and put it somewhere else on a different website, let's say, and it should still make sense. If I pull out this section here from this particular website and put it somewhere else, it loses its meaning essentially. It's not clear the benefits of what exactly. The section needs the overall context here to make sense. An article, for example, a blog article, I can take the entire article, put, put it somewhere else. It's still clear what it is. It's an article talking about something. So it's self-contained. In the world of web apps, you may have some kind of widget, like a weather widget or maybe a chat widget. Those types of widgets are also self-contained. You can put them anywhere. You can take them out and put them somewhere else and it still makes sense. And actually, it's a good idea to use article tag for that. Although it's not really a great name for that, but it does semantically make sense to use the article tag for that because it's self-contained. We also often have button. People confuse it sometimes with anchor tags. So when I click on an anchor tag, the goal is navigation. I should be navigating to some different route. When I click on a button, something interactive should happen. Maybe I'm opening up a modal. You shouldn't use button for navigation. Navigation is anchor tags. Button is more interactivity on the same page. Then we also have input and text area. You want to use input for one line of input and text area for multiple lines. Let's say I have some text here and I want to make some part of the text bold. So we have some other tags here that are a little bit strange to be honest. For example, we have the B tag for bold. You can wrap part of the text in B and it will become bold. This one actually doesn't have semantic meaning. And then there's also strong. It makes it bold, but also adds semantic meaning as in this is more important. Now I wouldn't use these tags just for styling. So a styling, I really try to contain to CSS. So if I would just need this for styling, I would just wrap this in a span, which is essentially the same as div. It has no semantic meaning. This is an inline level element. So it will not put this on, on, on a different line. Div is a block level element. It will put it on a different line. And then here you can just style this, right? You can make it font bold. You also get more granular control this way. I can make it medium or semi bold. The same with italic, by the way. So if you want to make it italic, I'm using a tailwind class here and I prefer that. But in HTML, we also have I tag, the I tag. It's the same as the B tag. It just makes it italic without semantic meaning. And then there's also EM emphasized. So this also adds some additional meaning, same as strong. Right, so I don't like to use these tags. I like to use span and just style it with CSS. Let's take a look at some examples to see how other websites have done this. And I'll also show you when you can actually use div. I like to use the Stripe websites. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see here at the top, they do have a header tag. And if I open this up, they have a bunch of divs. Div stands for divider. So sometimes you need to do particular styling and it makes sense to group one part of the layout with some other part, right? So you often need it for styling to separate certain parts, divide them, right? So it's a divider element. If you open up some part, you will eventually see that they are indeed using the nav tag as well. They have mobile versions as well. So the markup here is a bit cluttered, but it does follow what you would expect, header and then a nav. And then for their logo, they actually use an anchor tag that wraps an SVG. So if you click the logo, you will actually go back to the homepage. All right, and then they are using section here. They don't seem to be using the main tag. I think it's a mistake. They have a bunch of different sections then after the header. So here for the hero section, typically that's the first part you see when you come to a page. They are using the section tag for that. And then if we scroll down a little bit, they are also using a section tag for the next section because all of these logos belong to the same overall semantic meaning, which is in this context that they are using Stripe, right? So all of the elements in there, they have the same semantic purpose. Therefore, it's better to wrap it in section than with div, but not article. An article means I should be able to pull this out of here and put it somewhere else and should still make sense. That's not the case here. If I pull this out here and put it somewhere else, it's not really clear what this is. But here in the context of the overall website, I understand what this is. These are companies that are using Stripe. Therefore, section tag here is the correct one, right? So then they have a bunch of other sections, right? So here, another section here, they're using an H1 here and an H2 here for this subheading. For subheadings, I think it's better to use a paragraph tag, actually. Typically, you don't want to use an actual heading tag for these subheadings. I think it's better to just use paragraphs, but it's not a big deal. And that's usually these landing pages, right? So just a bunch of different sections. And then at the bottom, they have a footer, right? So here they have their footer. I usually also like to give the example of the MDN website. So let's take a look at their article page. So here they are actually using the main tag. And here they actually wrap the entire article actually in an article tag, which makes sense because if I pull this out of here, I can put it somewhere else, but the article still makes sense, right? It's, it's still clear what it is. It's self-contained. It doesn't need the other context to make sense. The article tag is essentially the same as section with the additional requirement that you should be able to pull it out and put it somewhere else and it should still make sense. Now here they actually have an interesting site navigation part and they are actually using the aside tag for that. And then in there they have a nav tag, right? So nav is not only in the header, you can also use it here because this is also an important block of navigation. So it's perfectly fine to wrap this in a nav as well. Here on the left side, they are using the aside tag again for this sidebar on the 
left side. So those were all quite traditional websites. What about web apps? We live in the age of applications, which are much more interactive than these more static pages. Can you still use semantic tags there? This is one of the projects in my CSS course, and I'm using semantic tags here. So we have a header at the top. And let me show you here when you can actually use a div, a good use case for div. So you can see in this info bar here, I have a publish button as well as these breadcrumbs. They are two different things. They don't belong to the same overall semantic meaning, but I still need to wrap them in something because I need to style them separately from the rest. I need to wrap them in some element to get this layout. I should not use section here because they don't belong to the same semantic meaning. I should use a div a divider here. And then in there for the breadcrumbs themselves, I should use section because the elements in there, this icon, this text, they belong together, semantically speaking. And here I want to publish whatever the result of this work is. Well, that's a button. It should not be an anchor tag. I don't want to navigate. I want to do something, maybe open up a modal, for example. Right. So make sure if you want to become a React Next.js developer that you've mastered the underlying fundamentals. Those are both HTML as well as CSS and actually also JavaScript. I have courses on both CSS and JavaScript and my React Next.js course is coming out very soon. So check out the links in the description. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.